Hi everyone, today I'm talking about feature-based image registration in Structured Light Endoscopy. Structured Light Endoscopy can be based on a laser dot grid and it's a method that has been shown very useful for 3D imaging the 3D motion of vocal folds located in the larynx. For 3D reconstruction, the first thing we're doing is actually segmenting the laser rays. And then each laser ray is then assigned to its ideal position in the reference grid. With this information, we are capable for to reconstruct the 3D surface of the vocal folds because we know then um, the distance from the laser ray point to its reference position and can then compute the depth information. And as I said, commonly we are using manual annotations to do this and we are looking for a method that allows a fully automatic assignment. And we hypothesized that we can use image registration to fulfill this task. In this work today, we're just focusing on this assignment procedure. We used at the very beginning state-of-the-art biomedical image registration techniques such as the advanced normalization tools or short ANDs. To morph our moving image came from our experiments to our fixed reference image. However, we did not get really satisfactory results because especially here at the edges, um, what you can see here, the points are not really aligned to the ideal grid position. And we tried to set several hyperparameters, but we were really unsuccessful in morphing these points to these places. So we are thinking, can we use deep neural networks for, um, for image registration to maximize the accuracy for these corresponding points for this assignment procedure? So in general, we're actually looking for a transformation psi that translates each laser ray X in the moving image to its grid position in the fixed image. And Psi should consist of kind of two displacement fields, one for X and Y and one for the Y shift. What we used for, um, for training is a unit like encoder decoder architecture to predict these displacement um, fields depending on the moving and the fixed image. However, we don't have a ground truth actually for the displacement fields. But with our manual annotation of our training data set, where we know for each position in the segmented laser rays, we know its corresponding position in the ideal laser grid. We therefore can compute a distance. So if we know the displacement in X and Y, we can actually morph our warp, the moving point, to a new position to the warp point, and then calculate the distance, the Euclidean distance between the warp point and the ideal point on the laser grid. And this information we can actually use to compute a loss across all the morph points and try to minimize this. So next we were actually interested in what transformations can actually our network learn. So we used a synthetic data set based on five times five points and we were looking at the affine transformation an affine transformation combined with a nonlinear transformation, like here seen in the center, or the affine and the nonlinear transformation, and then we removed some points. Yeah, we call this a dropout. So we actually create some occlusions or missing data, and we want to see if the network is still capable of coping with these kind of demanding transformations. And long story short, yes, the network is actually capable of dealing with all three sets of data VM we tested the network with. Let me show you just briefly how the network performs over the course of training. And you can see that actually the points nicely converge really, um, really early on, but they are just sticking to the ideal position um, at later epochs. So when we tested our networks on an experimental XVO dataset, which is slightly more complex than the synthetic one, because it has more laser rays to be registered, we still see that actually our network and our custom loss function is capable of learning this transformation. So you can see here that the green points on the warp one actually align pretty accurate to the corresponding grid positions. What we found actually is that if you train only on ground truth or synthetic data, that this is not sufficient for gaining a high accuracy. 
when we combine in a blend the ground truth and synthetic data, we actually achieve a little bit of higher accuracy of 72%, but only with enable data augmentation and intense data augmentation, we actually achieve a very good conversion behavior um, with a simultaneous very low valida um, validation loss and an overall accuracy of 91% of whole load data and very low distances to the ideal position in the grid. So taken together, we introduced a novel feature or identity distance-based loss that allows image registration to align features to a grid reference. We could also show that our method is actually robust to various deformations such as affine and nonlinear ones and can cope with occluded or missing points. We further show that our method not only works on synthetic but also on experimental ex vivo data. And lastly, we obtain higher accuracies of over 91% on ex vivo data, rendering our full automatic method highly useful for structured light endoscopy. With this, Thank you for watching and looking forward to the discussion section later.